Chapter 14 The proem, therefore, is the beginning of a narration, which in dramatic poetry is the prologue, and in playing on the pipe the prelude. For all these are principles, or beginnings, and, as it were, preparatory, to what follows. And the prelude, indeed, is similar to the proem of the demonstrative kind of orations. For, as those that play on the pipe connect the prelude with the beginning of the song, thus also, in demonstrative orations, immediately after the orator has mentioned what he wishes to say, it is necessary to collect aptly with it what is to follow of which all rhetoricians adduce as an example the proem of isocrates in his oration in praise of helen for isocrates begins his encomium with blaming the sophists which has nothing in common with the praise of helen and yet because he has aptly conjoined it with the argument he has obtained praise but the proems of demonstrative orations are derived from praise or blame as in the proem of gorgias to his olympic oration o oh greeks this is a thing worthy of general admiration for he praises those who instituted the public spectacles isocrates on the contrary blames them quote, because they honoured indeed with gifts the virtues of the body but appointed no reward for wise men Close quote. The proems also of demonstrative orations are derived from counsel and advice, such for instance as, quote, that it is requisite to honour good men, on which account he, the orator, has undertaken to praise Aristides, close quote. or as he who wrote an oration in praise of Paris, for he says, quote, that it is neither requisite to praise those who are celebrated, nor those who are of no account, but those who are good, and at the same time obscure men, such as was Paris, the son of Priam. For he who thus begins his oration is one that gives counsel. Farther still, the proems of demonstrative orations are derived from forensic proems. But this is from things pertaining to the hearer, if the oration is concerning something paradoxical, or difficult, or much celebrated so as to require pardon from the auditors such for instance as the proem of coralus but now since all things are divulged close quote. the proems therefore of demonstrative orations are derived from these things viz from praise and blame from exhortation and dissuasion and from those things which are referred to the hearer it is necessary however that the proems should either be foreign or appropriate to the oration. With respect to proems of the forensic kind, it is necessary to assume that they are able to effect the same thing as the prologues of dramatic and the proems of epic poems. For dithyrambic proems are similar to those of the demonstrative kind, as, quote, on account of thee and thy gifts or spoils, close quote. But in dramatic and epic poems, the proems are a specimen of what is to follow, that the reader may foresee what the subject of them is, and that his mind may not be kept in suspense. For that which is indefinite causes the mind to wander. The poet, therefore, who delivers into the hands of the reader the beginning of his poem, makes him follow with attention the rest of it. Hence Homer, quote, the wrath of Peleus' son, O goddess, sing, close quote. and, quote, the man for wisdom's various arts renowned, long exercised in woes, O muse, resound, close quote. and another poet, quote, again, O muse, inspire my verse, and sing how from the Asian land a mighty war spread over Europe, close quote tragic poets also indicate respecting the drama though not immediately as euripides does yet they indicate what it is in the prologue as sophocles in the oedipus quote, polybius was my father quote. and after the same manner comic poets 
the most necessary and proper office therefore of a proem is this to unfold the end for the sake of which the oration was composed on which account if the end is manifest and the subject matter is trifling the proem must be omitted other species of proems however which are used by orators are remedies and things of a common nature and these are derived from the speaker and the hearer from the subject matter and from the opponent from the orator therefore and the opponent those proems are derived which pertain to the dissolving or making an accusation but these must not be similarly employed by the plaintiff and defendant for by the defendant what pertains to accusation must be introduced in the beginning but by the plaintiff at the end of the oration but for what reason it is not immanifest for it is necessary that the defendant when he is about to introduce himself should remove all impediments so that he must dissolve the accusation at the beginning of his speech but the opponent should be criminated by the plaintiff at the end in order that the hearers may remember the better what however pertains to the auditor consists in rendering him benevolent to the orator and enraged with the opponent sometimes also it is advantageous to the cause that the auditor should be attentive and sometimes that he should not for it is not always beneficial to render him attentive hence many orators endeavour to excite laughter in their hearers a summary account of a thing also contributes to celerity of apprehension and this is likewise effected by the orator's appearing to be a worthy man for the audience are more attentive to men of this description but they are attentive to great things to things pertaining to themselves to admirable and to delightful things hence it is necessary to inform the audience that the oration will be concerning things of this kind on the contrary if the orator wishes the audience not to be attentive to the cause he must say that the subject matter is a thing of small consequence that it does not pertain to them and that it is a troublesome affair it is necessary however not to be ignorant that all such things are foreign to the orations for they pertain to a depraved hearer and to one who attends to what is foreign to the purpose for if you were not a person of this description there would be no occasion for a proem except so far as it is requisite to give a summary account of the affair in order that the oration as a body may have a head farther still to render the audience attentive if it should be requisite is common to all the parts of an oration because universally the audience are less attentive to what is said in the progress than in the beginning of the oration hence it is ridiculous to endeavour to procure attention in the beginning of the oration because then all the hearers are especially attentive hence attention is to be procured wherever occasion offers by saying for instance quote, give me your attention for this business is not more mine than yours Close quote. and quote, i will relate to you a transaction of such a nature that you have never heard of anything so dreadful or so admirable Close quote. but this is as prodicus says when the audience are drowsy to promise to say something to them from his demonstration estimated at fifty drachmas it is evident however that the proem is referred to the auditor not so far as he is an auditor for all orators in the proems either criminate or dissolve fear as from the antigone of sophocles quote, i will tell you o king though it was not my intention to have come hither as a messenger close quote. and from the iphigenia in taurus of euripides quote, why do you preface close quote. a proem also is necessary when the cause is bad or appears to be bad for in this case it is better to discuss anything else than to dwell upon the cause hence servants do not directly reply to the question they are asked but their answer is circuitous and prefatory but we have shown whence it is requisite to render the audience benevolent and have explained everything else of this kind 
since however it is well said by ulysses to minerva in odyssey fourteen quote, give me as a friend and a man to be pitied to reach phoenicia's land Close quote. it is necessary to pay attention to these two things but in proems of the demonstrative kind it is necessary to make the auditor fancy that either himself or his race or his pursuits or something else belonging to him is praised together with the person who is the subject of the oration for what socrates says in the menexemus of plato is true quote, that it is not difficult to praise the athenians among the athenians but among the lacedaemonians Close quote. but the proems of popular orations are derived from those of the forensic kind for these have not naturally any themselves since the audience are well acquainted with the subject and the thing itself is not in want of any proem but a proem is here requisite either on account of the orator or the opponents or if the audience should not think the affair of just so much consequence as it is but of greater or less consequence hence it is necessary either to criminate the opponent or to dissolve the accusation against him and either to amplify or diminish the affair but for the sake of these things a proem is requisite or a proem is necessary for the sake of ornament since without this the oration will appear to be carelessly composed and such is the encomium of gorgias on the Eliens, for without any previous extension and graceful movement of his arms like the athlete before they engage he immediately begins quote, Elis, a happy city Close quote. end of chapter fourteen of book three recording in memory of mitchell edwards